Hey everybody, it's 11 o'clock. We're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, so first, I just wanna thank you all for taking the time out of your day to join us. Um, we're super excited. We have a lot to go over today with water lines. Um, so let's just jump right in. Um, a quick disclosure, um, all of us here are um, either consultants or educators um, and, or employees for ProEdge Dental Water Lab. So this was made possible um, by ProEdge. Let's do some quick introductions. Um, I'll go first. My name is Carly. I have been with ProEdge for about three years now. Um, I get the pleasure of speaking with dental professionals all day, every day, and I get to help out offices find the best protocol um, for them. So I really love um, what I do and, and helping people is just my favorite thing. Um, Amanda Hill, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? All right, everyone. Hi, my name is Amanda Hill. I am a dental hygienist uh, and I live in the state of Virginia and I am a waterline enthusiast and have uh, just hopped on the bandwagon for safe water lines and have been able to start lecturing uh, and writing about water lines. And so um, I do a lot of different great things within the dental industry, writing and speaking. And I also have a podcast called Your Dental Top Five. So feel free to tune in. Um, but I'm excited to be a part of the Waterline webinar today and talk about real clinical experiences that I've had. And then we have Kelly, the famous, famous Kelly T. <laughs> Why don't you introduce yourself? I don't know about famous, but <laughs> hi. Yes, I'm Kelly T. Um, Kelly T because we have a Kelly B here. And I don't know if you've seen any of our YouTube videos, but um, I'm in a, in a couple of those. Uh, pardon my facial expressions. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> a senior consultant education specialist here at ProEdge. I've been working here for about four years now, a um, little over four years, like exactly four years almost. Um, and uh, like Carly, I get to work with offices all week, um, all day, every day, and help them to uh, get clean water and understand the reasoning why. So really excited to have Amanda with us, get the clinical, to get, have the clinical knowledge. Um, but Mike, you are the ultimate expert. So why don't you introduce yourself? I'm the old man who's made every mistake there is. I've been playing, <laughs> I've been testing water for a long time, but today is gonna be so fun because I can hide behind three geniuses and just read, <laughs> I'm just gonna read the chat and interrupt you guys the whole time, right? I'm just gonna say, hello, Fargo, hello, Bismarck, hello, yeah. Michigan, whatever. <laughs> Mike always makes it fun. We, you can't without having fun because it's because you have to be unprofessional on these things it's really important <laughs> well you know water lines are awfully exciting so you know mike brings the party yep right he definitely does um so kelly why don't you um tell us a little bit about our objectives for today yeah thank you and again thank you everyone for for being on here so excited to to share um some of this with you and uh, you know, an hour is not going to be enough, and Carly will talk about that, you know, here in a bit, but it's, it's just true. But we want to um, we want to share with you mainly uh, why waterline maintenance is important. Why, why is, is it something that you need to do? So we want to teach the importance of having that uh, robust protocol for your office, but we're going to teach you how to do that in an effective and an efficient way. Um, and also, we wanted to let you know how important you are how much we appreciate every single thing that you do. Uh, and that's, I think that's our main objective for today is to let you know that no matter what realm of dentistry you're in, we see you, we appreciate you. And, and Amanda, man, she has just been, she's a tech, now joining this webinar, I just want you to know you are a waterline nerd like us, but we- I love waterlines, yes. <laughs> We truly appreciate you. We appreciate everyone that works in dentistry, um, especially with COVID. Man, this we saw this picture on LinkedIn and it just really kind of hit home that is the new normal. And so we, we see you, we appreciate you, we applaud you. You know, we sit in your dental chairs um, every six months. And so we thank you for wearing all that PPE, that extra um, stuff that you have to do to make sure everyone uh, is, is safe. We, 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 that can't be easy. Uh, and we know that the, the medical field may take, you know, a front seat to the dental field, but dental is in a high risk category. And so thank you, thank you, thank you for, for everything that you do to keep your patients, your practice, all of us safe. 
And we are essential. I'm just saying. Right. Yeah, absolutely essential. Yeah. And high, and high risk. And there's been no outbreaks. There's no been spikes of outbreaks of COVID among dental health care workers, even though everybody says there's three of the high risk uh, employment out there. It's so because it's, we're really smart and we know what we're doing. And look at all these people that have come to the webinar today to even get even better. So, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Taking time out on a good Friday to learn more about dental water lines. Yeah. Infection control is a lot of work and I know it's even more work now. So we want to make it as easy as possible for you. Um, we're just going to go over a quick laundry list. Um, all attendees will be able to get one um, live uh, CE credit through CE Zoom. There will be a gift at the end. So that's super exciting. Stick around for that. Um, this webinar will be recorded and up on our YouTube page. So um, you can always go back and, and watch. Um, we're going to have a Q&A function at the end. Um, if you have any questions, jot them down throughout because we'll get to all of those at the end. But like Kelly had mentioned already, one hour is never enough. This is a lot of information we're going to go over, but we are always available. If you have any questions, you can always give our team a call um, and we're happy to do consultations to get to know your office um, and exactly what protocol works for you. Um, so Kelly, for those who are new to the biofilm party, can you tell us exactly what we're talking about here? Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's, it's really important to, to, to go over this. And um, because it is, you know, prior to, to coming on board at ProEdge, I was a nurse for several years. So I would go to the dentist and see all these lines and I didn't know which was which. So want to just make sure that everyone is, is clear on the on what water lines we are talking about, um, because there can be some confusion. So we want you to know that we are experts uh, and what we are going to be talking about today are these, the water that's going to be putting uh, the, or the lines that's going to be putting water into your patient's mouth. So the air water syringe, handpiece lines, uh, scalar, cavachon lines, um, those are the lines that we're talking about. We are not talking about these, the evacuation or suction lines. Um, so just wanted to, to be clear. And so going throughout, you, everyone knows what, what lines we're talking about. Also, we want to let you know that we're going to be talking about three things. You're going to hear us say three things a lot. Uh, throughout. <laughs> we want to kind of just touch base up front. So, you you know, if, if this is your, you know, first time or you're just getting into de to the dental field or whatnot. Um, and again, it's just basic. So we'll just kind of quickly touch on it. But we want to make sure you, you understand what these three things are, because again, you're going to hear us talk about them a lot. So the first thing um, is, is shocking. And you're going to, that's probably the word you're going to hear the most. Uh, and if anyone wants to keep like a tally, that would be cool. Let us know. <laughs> times we say it, uh, but you will hear us say that word a lot. And what is shocking? Um, shocking is using a strong chemical or disinfectant to clean out your, the insides of your water lines. Um, so kind of same as like shocking your swimming pool. You're gonna have to shock that, shock your hot tub or whatever. You need to use a strong chemical to do so. Um, and then treating. Uh, treating is using a low level antimicrobial to maintain the lines that you get clean with shocking. So that's going to be your tablets, your straws, anything that's safe to be to safe for your patients to ingest. It's going to keep your your patients safe. Um, and then finally, testing, and that's verification um, that step one, shocking, and treat, and step two, treating, are working. Uh, so that it's proving that you have an effective protocol in your office, and it also proves that you meet the CDC guidelines or that you are in CDC or that you are CDC compliant. Um, so you know, speaking of the CDC compliance. I know they put out an interim uh, guideline and there's, there's, there's a guideline in effect, but Mike, can you touch a little bit about what, what they put out uh, later last year, or I'm not exactly sure exactly when the, this interim came out, but can you touch on this a little bit? Yeah, it was, it, we started, everybody paid attention to the CDC at least last April when we were, when we were all at home doing nothing except on Zoom meetings like this and going crazy. Um, but the CDC said at that time, before you go back to work, now that your office has been shut down for several weeks, periods of non-use, before you reopen, don't forget to test your water lines and take appropriate action. Test your lines, shock if necessary, and then most people use a treatment product so they don't have to shock every week. But yeah, so like, I was going to ask you this. Go ahead, oh, Amanda, I was going to ask you. Yeah. I was going to ask well, we you. We went that. into this, yeah, with clean lines, you know, then COVID happened. I know our lines were clean because we tested them right before shutdown. And then we had shut down and then we came back and tested our lines and we failed. 
So oh, really? those lines just sat stagnant. You know, we did our best to purge, but you can't purge out all that water. And, uh, and so we failed. So we did have to start back again with a shock um, and then test it again. We passed and back into our regular maintenance treatment. So, um, so it definitely happened. You know, even the CDC building in Atlanta, they had to uh, shut down their regular drinking water lines because they had biofilm in their lines because nobody was in the building. So it can happen when you, shut, when you don't use the water. There's continuing guidance from the, from the Department of Health about the potential for Legionella in premise plumbing. And it is a concern now that more people are working from home and office buildings are sitting quietly and stag the water is stagnating. It's a concern. So it's a good idea. What we're doing is on a small scale, we're, we're, you know, we're taking care of these water lines, but occasionally you have to take a look at the bigger picture of the building, pre the premise plumbing, they call it. Yeah. That's awesome. See, yep. isn't it fun to have Amanda here that, you know, we can <laughs> get some real life stories. Right. As Amanda, totally, totally real. As Amanda just had said, you know, she purged her lines before the shutdown. A lot of practices didn't, didn't do that. They just kind of had to get up and walk out. And um, this is why COVID created such a unique situation for dental unit water lines. Um, those COVID led to those shutdowns. Those shutdowns led to stagnation. The stagnation led to biofilm development. And that biofilm creates the perfect environment for pathogenic bacteria. And so we're not worried that COVID-19 is going to grow in your water lines. What we are worried about are pathogens like Mycobacterium abscessus, Pseudomonas, Legionella, things like that. So um, again, we just want to point out and stress how unique of a situation this caused. And, um, you know, it's not too late. It's not too late to, to shock and start treating and testing. Um, but yeah, this and COVID didn't just create the situation either. It's been around for years, right, Mike? It's called dentistry's dirty little secret. Oh, you always bring me up when there's a toilet involved. Why yeah. is that? <laughs> I'll tell you why that is, because I tested the toilet water at Pro Edge. <laughs> we <laughs> test I, everything. Yeah, we, we got another one going on right now. We're doing another, we're doing one right now. It's going to be an abstract at OSEP. And I think Amanda's speaking at OSEP, right? So that'll be fun. I'm speaking at OSEP on water lines and suction uh, lines. Oh, that's awesome. So I here's just recently what we tested the water in my fridge, because, you know, I got to test right. water everywhere. And? It well, passed. We, and it passed. Well, guess what? Our Brita pitcher? was way worse than our toilet water. Now, when I say toilet water, I mean from the tank, not from the bowl, but still, we use that to make tea every day. For the record, we do boil that water and that gets it down to zero CFUs. But yeah, our Brita filter had 52,000 CFUs per milliliter. And you know we get water tests all the time. Our, our machine quits counting at around 90,000. And after that, it's just too numerous to count. But yep, we're nerds. We test water. We have no life. We, uh, we, we have too much time on our hands. I don't know. What <laughs> yeah, just look at the but, pictures. It is just right. so gross. And it's not just in the water lines. But um, so we, we know the bacteria is a problem. But um, first, we just want to start with the why. Why is this something that we should be concerned about? Kelly, why don't you tell us a little bit about Mimi Morales? Yeah, you know, and she is just one of the many, the many faces of the why behind dental, dental you know, uh, waterline maintenance. Um, and so I love to start with the why because it really, it humanizes things and it makes things real. And this is, it's, it's uh, um, often overlooked, but waterline maintenance is critical. It's a critical part of an infection control because of sweet little faces like this. So yes, the, again, this is Mimi Morales. Um, and she was just one of many of what, uh, I believe 200 little, little kids that were infected in the Anaheim outbreak a few years back. She was, she's just a seven year old little girl who went in for a routine pulpotomy um, and developed a severe, severe serious infection in her, in her mouth and her jaw. Um, her parents took her into the emergency room. Uh, the infectious disease uh, specialist, uh, pediatric infection, infectious disease specialist said that it was the worst infection she had ever seen in her whole career. Um, so, I mean, that in itself is just, is just scary. Uh, Mimi was hospitalized for more than a month. Uh, she had to have permanent teeth removed, uh, so several surgeries. Uh, I believe her grandma, and I'm paraphrasing, her grandma said something to the, the effect of the doctor told her that they removed as much bone as possible without dis disfiguring her. 
Um, so man, I mean, that's heart wrenching. I mean, just, just from a, 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 from a routine visit to the dentist, right? So it's just, and, and it's preventable. Um, and finally, what works for Mimi is an antibiotic that is created to treat leprosy. So guys, we're not talking about just the regular amoxicillin, penicillin that we give our kids all in, uh, now all the time, you know, for ear infections and whatnot. We're talking about a, a heavy duty antibiotic that created lifelong side effects uh, for not only Mimi, but for several others. Um, so not only does she have to deal with the, the problem that with, with the jawbone and the permanent teeth removal, but, but, but lifelong side effects from the cure. Um, but Mike, take, take us a little bit through the timeline of, of, of how things happened and the whole Anaheim outbreak timeline. Yeah, Mimi's, a, Mimi's kind of the poster child because she was the first, but she was not the last, right? And when I say the first, we're talking it for everybody to be clear. To be clear, this is why we do dental unit water lines because healthy children can get infected from contaminated dental unit water lines. So the way it worked was Mimi comes into the ER, a series of miracles that Kelly described. A month later, a second child shows up at the ER. The doctor was able to do a forensic history. They traced it back to this dental office in Anaheim. We got involved to test the water at that, at that clinic. Uh, and then a third kid and then a fourth kid shows up at Children's Hospital of Orange County. When it got to be 12 kid, it was on 12 kids, it was on the local news and there was a van out front every day saying, it's a parent's worst nightmare. You take your healthy kid to the dentist for a routine procedure and they end up in the hospital for months having multiple surgeries, IV pick lines in their arms, uh, right? And then, and then more kids saw that on the news and more parents saw it on the news. They brought their kids into the ER. When it got to be 72 kids, they shut the website down. So we didn't know how many. Now we do, we know it's 200 kids and 200 families and yeah, 200 lawsuits. And are they going to have 200 lawsuits? They're going to have four bellwether trials instead. They were scheduled last year. They've been, what's the term? Postponed. Oh, continued. Believe. Continued. Thank you, Amanda. Continued. <laughs> Thank you, Law and Order. Continued. They've been continued. Uh, it'll happen this year, maybe, depending on COVID and if they can get a courtroom in California. But it's going to be a black eye for dentistry, a black eye for corporate dentistry. Right, the website shut down at 71 patients that were infected. Um, 99 of those required surgery, 99% of them required surgery. Um, and I think about 25% of them required two surgeries. Um, here's the scariest number of all. The mean number of days, the median number of days was 85 days before symptoms presented. So imagine you take your loved one to the emergency room and you say, and they see this and they're smart enough to ask the question, did you go to the dentist? You would say, well, we haven't been to the dentist for 409 days. How do you cause, how do you prove causation when it can take over a year before the symptoms develop and then you get all these infections? So And you know, Mike, one thing I'd like to bring back to is, is you know, a lot of dental professionals will say to me, Well, I've been practicing for 30 years and I've never tested my water lines and and we've never made anybody sick. But the truth is we don't really know the answer, do we? Because yeah. no, we 409 don't. days later, right. I don't the average is three months. Know of. Exactly. The average among 200 kids, the or 71 kids, the average was 85 days. That's three months. Three months. No one's going to put that together, right? So that's the scary thing. This is called mycobacterium abscessus. It's a nasty thing, and it can grow if the conditions are right. If they would have tested and treated, if they would have tested their water lines, this never would have happened. It's like, okay, here it is. Here's the number. 26 kids had two surgeries. Uh, 45 lost permanent teeth, and 29 had to use that, as Kelly mentioned, the leprosy uh, antibiotic, which has causes hearing loss in a lot of kids. So that's, it's a grim thing. It's going to be a black eye for dentistry. It's going to be in the news. And that's why you guys are smart to be here today, to get out ahead of this and, and to protect yourself and to be ready for when the questions come. And there's, there's aerosol phobia after COVID anyway. So um, it's just, it's smart that you guys are here. Give yourselves a round of applause. <laughs> and as Mike had mentioned, um, the Anaheim case that um, occurred in 2019, the uh, trial was uh, continued until January of this year, but it has been moved out again. Um, and actually this month is, is when they're planning on uh, going back to the case. So we don't know any really updates about that. Same with the Atlanta case, um, mycobacterium abscessus infected 35 patients and we're still waiting on any 
any information from, from that case, but we just want to point out that these two cases are not the only um, cases that, that happen. These ones are on national news and they're, they're you know, spread and, and known of, but we get calls every few months that um, don't make it on the, the news. So we just want to let you know that this could happen to anybody. And as Amanda just mentioned, um, you may not even know it could already have happened. So this is super important. Um, so we, we talked about the how, let's talk about the why. Amanda, why does uh, bacteria grow so well in dental unit water lines? Because dental unit water lines are not like this nice, beautiful, flowing stream where the water's rushing and you can hear the birds chirping in the background, <laughs> right? No, they're not like that, unfortunately. They're tiny, right? They're teeny tiny and the water gets to touch all the sides and they're way more like a stinky swamp. Like the kind where like, I'm just, I can feel the mosquitoes landing on me right now. And I can kind of like smell the, you know, that yucky smell. Like you've purged your lines in the morning and been like, Ooh, that smells a little funny. Um, and that's what we're talking about. It's that stagnant lines where that micro bacteria just grows. And, and that's what water lines are like. So if they were nice and open and flush, this wouldn't happen, but this is why we have to take care of them. I like to use the, the analogy of, and, and you're right, exactly. I mean, it's that, it's that stagnation. And I, I, I like to use the analogy of, you know, using that stagnation exactly, but how does it get downstream? How does it, how does it infect, how does it infect, you know, kids? So I get made fun of for using this analogy because I always say, hey, I was walking outside and saw dandelions and, you know, we all love it. you know, they pop up. We all love it. <laughs> but it's, it's a truth. It's a, it's a good analogy. So, I mean, what happens when you do blow on a dandelion, right? The seeds kind of disperse. And next thing you know, you have them popping up all over and it's springtime and we're in Colorado. So we get a lot of them. I was trying to look out the window, but I don't see anything growing right now. But, um, but they grow quickly, right? In fact, so, and that's the same thing with that biofilm in the water line. So that stagnation, it, it just, the bacteria grows and it grows exponentially. And then every time you use your air water syringe or your hand piece, it just kind of, some bacteria will break off, move further down the line, reattach, and then the whole process starts over, it starts to grow really, really quickly, and then you use it again, and that's how it kind of ends up into your patient's mouth. So that was a really non-scientific way of explaining. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, and it's true. You only uh, need your air water syringe for a few seconds at a time. And Mike, the water line sits stagnant. You'll have to remind me of the number for 20 and a half hours out of the day, they're sitting stagnant. Other than that, you're only running it for just a few seconds and right. it's stubborn, right, Mike? Yeah, right, the lines are small, right? They're a millimeter in diameter. And, when, and if these dental water lines were clear, you'd notice that when we squirt the air water syringe for two seconds, the water moves about that far downstream. And then we leave it overnight and what do the bugs do? Uh, Amanda would say it's a party. Right? They have a biofilm party. <laughs> it's a biofilm party. You know what their job is? To go forth and multiply. And they're so good at it that you just can't stop them. You have to shock the lines really clean and that, and that cleans the lines out, but they're gonna come back, right? So with the fun, the fun part of this <laughs> picture over here, this is our least favorite slide, by the way. <laughs> but uh, what's the most important part of this life cycle? Is it when it attaches? Is it when it grows thick? And it, or when it grows thick enough to detach and start the process all over again? We don't know. They're all what all we know is that you can't stop biofilm unless you shock your lines regularly, probably more often than you think. And then you can use a treatment product to buy yourself weeks or months, but not years in between shocks. I think that's that's the big lesson. That's one of the big lessons from today is you, if you want clean water, you got to learn how to clean those lines and, and you do that. And it takes a nasty chemical. And the dental well, the line, thing, go ahead. The thing that I think is the craziest is that study that's that's in the fourth bullet point is that the bacteria in the lines can reach 200,000 CFUs in less than five days. So if, like if you have a new office and you're like, our office is only a year old, we don't need to worry about shocking and testing. Five days, it only took five days from that brand new office to start having it at 200,000 and, and we wanna keep it under 500. It, it grows and has so many babies so fast. That's it, that's it. Actually, uh, Shannon Mills likes to say, you don't need Adam and Eve because it, it reproduces asexually. Two become four and four become 400 and 400 becomes 4,000 on Monday. So <laughs> learn to shock. That's, That's some crazy math. Yeah. <laughs> this is probably 
making you guys a little nervous or scared, <laughs> but we're going to teach you how, how you can be CDC compliant. So first, we're just going to start um, with the CDC guidelines again. That's the most important thing is knowing the CDC guidelines. So Mike, why don't you go over, over those? Uh, 33 states say that you got to follow the CDC guidelines as the minimum standard. The other states are maybe ambiguous about it or indeterminate, but they all say unprofessional conduct is is when you don't is when you don't treat a patient to the standard of care that's that your peers are doing right, and so um, we're not saying that you got it. We, when people ask us, we have a joke around the office, right, Carly? When <laughs> someone says, "How often do I have to test my water lines?" We say, "Well, more often than never." It's probably mm -hmm. a good, right. at least that's a good idea. And Amanda would say, "Oh, daily would be good," but <laughs> <laughs> um, sure. You know, on this it's crazy to me too, though, Mike, it, on this one, I mean, if you'll notice that, yeah, the 33 states, you know, are the light blue color, but if you look and you notice California, we just talked about the biggest lawsuit in dental history, right? So just because you don't, maybe your state doesn't require it as law, the CDC, as, uh, doc, uh, CDC guidelines as law, doesn't mean you're not going to be held accountable, right? So it's just important. You don't want to be. You don't want to be the one that that's going to court because of something that is preventable. So yeah, I guarantee that those point. lawyers can't use the, the those dentists in California can't use some argument that says the CDC didn't tell us that we had to. That's not going to get them off the hook for this case. Yeah. But we but we heard that that is part of their defense. Isn't that fascinating? Yeah. And yeah, Was Washington now requires quarterly testing of every line every quarter. Um, Georgia has a lawsuit. Florida just had that big $5.5 million fine. Was it Carly? Yeah. Um, yep. that, and that was for, you know, not sanitizing instruments properly, but this is just as important as all of those other steps that you do every single day to be compliant. Um, that's with infection control. This is just as important. Absolutely. So we've, and we've broken. Uh-huh. One quick thing. Remember when you, follow the CDC guidelines, you're protecting your patients and your staff. But when you document it, which is really important, then you're protecting your practice, your yeah. business, your reputation. So don't forget to document, document, document that you're doing yeah. all these things. Okay, here's, here's how it works in the real world. We can joke about this and we can, we're not trying to scare anybody, but chances are you might go 30, let's say you have a 50 year career and you never have one patient complaint and you never have an employee complaint or one ex-employee complaint. But if you do, you get inspected. So there's no inspections, perfect case scenario. Then there's inspections, not great. One of the questions they ask is, show us your waterline records, your waterline testing records, show us your autoclave testing records, show us you're up to date on CE. Those are the three things inspectors ask in all 50 states. And then the worst case is infection. So nothing, inspection, infection. Avoid the bottom. <laughs> exactly. For sure. We've broken the CDC guidelines down um, for dental unit water quality into three pillars. So we want to make it super comprehensible for you guys. So the first thing is going to be not only using sterile water um, in surg with surgical procedures, but using a sterile delivery system. And Amanda, you are in the in the dental office every day. I would love for you to explain this a little bit more. Absolutely. So, so when you're doing a sterile procedure, when you're doing surgery, you know, periodontal surgery, you're doing, um, you know, extractions or things like that, surgical extractions, you want to make sure that you're not using the water from your dental unit itself. You, you want to bring in that sterile water usually comes in a bag. You have it hanging. You got this nice little fresh tubing and you hook all your stuff up to it. And that way that is the cleanest, you know, the sterile water. There's, there's no CFUs, right? If it's sterile. Um, and so you know that you're, there's no way that you're going to put any in, anything into that patient's bloodstream. So you can use a, a bulb syringe or you can use the whole getup, but you also have to use fresh lines, brand spanking new ones so that nothing will grow. Yeah. And, there, and the key is, is to use that sterile, sterile source, right? Not, not yep. just sterile water, but the sterile source is so, so, so important. Yeah. And here's an example of why it's so super important. Um, a New Jersey dentist just not that long ago, um, 
uh, was suspended because uh, 15 uh, patients got infected. They actually contracted uh, endocarditis. So that was from not using sterile water with a sterile delivery system for those invasive procedures. And this was on the news, um, but again, not all of them are, um, are. So this is just a reminder how important it is to use sterile water and a sterile delivery system. So the second pillar is going to be your dental unit water quality. So the EPA has a guideline of 500 colony forming units or less, and that's the same as municipal water, um, your city water. So there's a few ways that you can get there um, and we'll help you out with all of that. But the first and maybe most important thing that the first step is to have independent water reservoirs or water bottles on your units. Um, then you're going to want to flush for two minutes in the morning and then 20 to 30 seconds um, in between each patient. And it really surprises me how many people don't, don't do that. So that's super important as well. Um, you want to use a chemical treatment and that's going to be your, your daily maintenance treatment, your low level antimicrobial, like a tablet or a straw. Um, and then you want to shock, uh, we recommend quarterly and that's going in with that strong chemical to really clean out the lines. And the third pillar is your verification of compliance. Um, so it's super, super important to test your water. And as Amanda had kind of mentioned earlier, you know, you could be thinking, oh, I, I do all that. I flush for 20 to 30 seconds and I use a chemical treatment, I, I shock. Um, so I don't really need a test, but that's, you know, not the case. It's super important to have that documentation like Mike had said earlier as well. Um, to protect your practice in the case of an audit or an inspection, and not just your water test results, but your documentation of training and your standard operating procedures and things like that. Um, so you want to use sterile water for sterile delivery or in sterile delivery systems for surgical procedures. Keep your dental unit water quality at 500 colony forming units or less, and then test to make sure that your protocol is working. Okay, so let's get down to the nitty gritty now, how, how can we do this with, um, with your practice? And Kelly, why don't you talk, talk us through the um, famous proven protocol? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we probably scared you guys to death already. And <laughs> let's talk about the, how to make sure that you are in compliance, right? And we have three easy steps for you. And we like to call it the proven protocol or the three steps of safe water. And it's those three, three steps that I, that I was talking about at the beginning but we're gonna dive deeper into each one. Um, but the first step again is shocking. In, and shocking is probably the key to water line maintenance because that's gonna get your lines clean. So that's using that strong chemical uh, before treatment uh, at least every quarter. And of course, if you have a test that reveals a failure, you're gonna want to shock and then, and then, and then retest. Uh, step two is your daily treatment. So we like tablets, we like straws something that's designed to be continuously present in your water bottles at all times. Um, that's going to, that's going to uh, keep your lines clean for, for a period of time. So shocking will get, shocking will get them clean, treating will, will keep them clean for a period of time. And then step three is testing, uh, like we've, we've all mentioned, and that is gonna be your proof. Without that testing, you can be doing step one and step two, but if you don't test to prove it, it didn't happen. You know, I know as a nurse, if I didn't document something, it didn't happen. Same thing here. If you don't have proof, you can't prove that you are, that you're one, you're effect, that your protocol is effective or, um, or that you're in CDC compliance. So uh, these three steps are what we like to call the proven protocol. And it's really, it's a really easy if you just kind of break it, break it down into these three steps. Is anybody taking tally of how many times we've said shock yet? We're about to say it a lot. I just lost count. <laughs> well, we're going to dive deeper now. So yeah. shocking, uh, shocking again, that's like swimming pools. I you have to do yeah, every now and then shocking is, is, is so important in your water lines. Um, that biofilm, you saw pictures of how thick and sticky it gets. Um, and so it's really, really important that you, that you use a strong disinfectant. <laughs> Clean out. Somebody said we've just said it 18 times. 18, oh. 18 times. Oh, 18? Thanks, Kelly. Oh, no, oh, nobody said, 20 someone said 28. 28. 28. Okay, sorry. Keep going. <laughs> sorry, keep going. <laughs> sorry, we're never going to get through this slide deck. We only right, have. Right, right. <laughs> you know, Carly, like Car Carly and I said at the beginning, we talk to offices all the time. And so that's probably the most, the word we say the most throughout the day. Oh. It just need a shock. Shock with something strong. 
Um, and so we like a product made by Crosstex. It's not that we, we like one product over another. Uh, it's just, it's proven by data to be really effective. So Crosstex, Liquid Ultra, really good product. And then we like diluted bleach, um, but you wanna make sure you're following your, your manufacturer's instructions for use um, on, on what, what you are able to use. So if Crosstex is a great product, EPA approved, diluted bleach is, is cheap and effective. Uh, we have a video on how to shock with diluted bleach at proedgedental.com slash shock. Starring um, Kelly and Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> so you'll see some great animation and drama from me because I'm <laughs> um, but uh, you never this is one part where we talk about evacuation lines is and this is really, really important, guys. So if you if you've kind of lost it, you're like, okay, I'm sick of these nerds here, <laughs> pay attention to this. So if whatever shock product you're using. Do not put it down your evacuation lines or your suction lines. You can shock flush into a sink and that's not associated with your dental unit into a cup or bucket. Do not put it down your evacuation lines as it will interfere with your amalgam separator. So there are separate shock products for your suction lines. We're not experts at those. You definitely wanna use them, but we're talking about water lines and you do not wanna put any shock product down your evacuation lines. Um, if you are using a straw treatment, so if you're using Dentapir, the Hufridi straw, Stericil, or Blue Tube, any of the straw treatments out there, it's really important that you don't shock with either the Liquid Ultra or diluted bleach through the, through that, uh, the straw. It will damage them. We don't want you to do that. So you do need to shock. No product is, is magic. I wish there was a magic bullet. There's not. Um, but you do need to shock but we have a, a, a solution for you. We have what we call a dummy straw. And speaking of dummy straw, Mike, do you have one handy? Yeah, yeah, right here. Yeah. So all of, all of these, uh, all the straws, the Denipure Stericil uh, and, uh, and ours okay. use the same quick connect. It's a, called a lure lock quick connect, right? So instead of shocking through this, you just take it off, put the dummy straw on, which has the same lure lock connector, quarter turn. Then you can shock through this baby and in 10 minutes later, you got clean water. If you yes. use bleach, bleach 10 minutes, the other ones are overnight. Right. So I to specify too, there's no chemicals or anything in the dummy Correct. straw. It's just it's a, a normal take up. Yes. 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 Thank you for pointing that out, Carly. Um, because yeah, you know, if you can definitely request one from us, but if you're using a tablet, you don't need one. Cause like Carly said, there's no chemical in that dummy straw. It's just an empty uptake tube. That's going to just lengthen your, your, your straw so you'll be able to to kind of suck up the chemical. So if you're using any of the tablets, uh, you don't need a dummy straw, but you still need to shock no matter what product you're using, whether it's a tablet or a, a straw. Um, so you may be asking, okay, well, we don't have water bottles or what am I, what, how, what am I supposed to do? What if my units plumb directly to the municipal supply? And I'll pass that on to you, Mike, because people hate <laughs> <'Cause here's> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's because Kelly and Carly have to tell people all day, every day, don't hate me, but here's my, our suggestion. A lot of people these days, especially, are learning that we have to shock our water lines, and many offices don't have water bottles. It's because we're just learning about this. This is new science. Don't worry. This is state of the art. So uh, you, I say, doctor, you don't have to buy a whole new chair and a whole new unit. But for 190 bucks a chair, you can retrofit and get a water bottle retrofit kit. You buy it from your service technician. You order it from the parts department. It's not in your Shine, your Patterson, your Benko catalog as a merchandise item. It's the service guys. They buy it like a part and they just put it on your chair. I was in an office a couple of weeks ago. They did four of them in, in an hour. There was two techs in there. They did four of them in an hour. So it costs 190 bucks per chair plus about, I don't know, 50 to 100 bucks labor depending on how many there are. So $200 later, you can, you can have a water bottle and then you can shock your lines with one to 10 bleach and have clean water in 10 minutes. We love water bottles. We don't sell them, but we you know they are cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's super easy. Our office did it. Our office retrofitted uh, oh. just actually just prior to COVID um, because I told them that they had to. And so they did it and our, <laughs> and our whole office did it and we got the water bottles and that's how we could start a, our proper water line protocol. So. Amanda, did you test your water before you had water bottles? Like yes, the... and we failed. <laughs> <laughs> Surprising. Uh, yeah. 
Well, the, that's what the ADA and the CDC says. You're not likely to pass. It can happen, and it does. Ha it happens like eight per six percent of the time. So, and that goes to that same Barbeau study. Basically, if you flush it long enough, you have a shot at getting one without a bug, it, without a biofilm in it. You have a you have a chance, but that'd be a good day to buy a lottery ticket too. I'm that's just right. Saying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No. Anyway. <laughs> What about uh, yeah, if you, we're using an inline cartridge or a centralized system? And most of these, so the ones on the left go in the junction box of your chair. It's just like at the foot of the chair and they go in there and those are fine if you have water bottles. If you don't have water bottles and you fail a water test, uh, there's no real good way to shock your water lines. So we say retrofit if you don't have, <laughs> you don't have Again, water, don't eat us. <laughs> These, and these centralized systems cost a, a, a lot of money. Um, and the Molinari study, which was the most comprehensive study done, and we'll talk a little bit about that later, they, they didn't do as well as, they, as you'd hope, right? I think their pass rate was in the 60 and 70% range. And you can shock with, with those, but they take a half day to do it. Yeah. So, and remember, remember Dr. Mertes, Carly and Kelly, a guy from a good guy. I from do. Ohio. Yes. I sent him his results like at on like the day before Christmas. Oh my gosh. Never will. Said, what did he say? He said, I wish you would have talked to me before I spent $7,000. Oh. There he goes. So I wish I would have and you said you, you should have called me before you. And <laughs> I wish you wouldn't have. And I wish you wouldn't have sent my water test results as I'm heading to my Christmas party, but I will have an extra drink tonight. <laughs> <laughs> getting, all right let's go to step two which is to treat your water lines we've all made it pretty clear how important shocking is let's talk a little bit more about treating mike do you want to talk about this um molinari yeah, and yeah nancy so study? john molinari nancy dewhurst did the most comprehensive study it was in compendium they looked at twenty two thousand water tests that's a pretty big study right and water tests fail 31 percent of the time so they dove a little deeper and said, let's take a look at the products. And the best results came if you followed the instructions for use. Who'd have thunk? If you read your instructions and you shock regularly, you get really good results. 88% is actually almost perfect. In, with staff turnover and the way bugs work, 90% is as good as you're gonna get. We, could, we have customers that get 95%. But if the tablets work 77% of the time and the straws work 72% of the time, this is the Molinari study. Uh, this isn't, you know, this isn't us saying that. They, they looked at several laboratories. Um, and the science proves that if you shock regularly, that it proves that three-step protocol, right, Carly? It's shock, treat, test. Right. I, think, I think that's it. Then the treatments, the treatments, they all work. They all can work. They all fail. They all can fail. Um, so it requires reading the instructions, shocking, and learning how to shock properly, and shocking probably quarterly at least. Shock, shock, shock. Shock, shock, shock. Where are we at now? I think we're at 100. <laughs> yeah. Amanda, why don't you tell us about how those daily treatments work against the biofilm? So uh, those daily treatments, you're, you know, you're putting in, you're, you're like trickling in the antimicrobial. So it's constantly running through those, remember those tiny tubes we talked about, that swampy swamp. And so we're putting in that low level antimicrobial so it can keep the levels down. Um, so, however, it doesn't always keep it so it can't you know, that it, it still can't start to have a little party, you know, it's not a rave, but it's a little party. Um, and so, and so the low level antimicrobials will keep those levels down so that biofilm won't grow so fast. But like we said, we're still shocking because it still does kind of start to, you know, the party starts to come back, people start to join the party. Yeah, right. it's, it's the, this yeah. is kind of a, an, an animation and we'll kind of kind of speed it up here because we're going a little bit long, but um, it, Amanda's exactly right. You know, those wool level antimicrobials kind of represented by the little blue guy or gal with the sword and shield. Um, that's your tablet, that's your straw. And it can mean, it can handle low levels of bacteria. Um, but over time, the bacteria keeps getting reinforced and reinforced both with stagnation and with the air and, and it overtakes that low level antimicrobial. And that biofilm becomes real thick and sticky, and and you won't see it. A lot of the times, it'll be it, it'll be clear. We'll get samples in a crystal clear, and they'll have too numerous to count. So, um, it just shocking is just necessary. It's absolutely necessary. Um, and again, shocking using that strong chemical to remove all that biofilm or bacteria. 
not going to be safe to, to, to squirt into your patient's mouth, right? We don't want to squirt diluted bleach or, or any shock product into our patient's mouth, but it's necessary to clean out those lines. Um, and then use in conjunction with the, the tablet or straw, that low level antimicrobial gets really good results. So both are needed. Both are needed. Um, the antimicrobial is going to inhibit that growth, but the shocking is going to be necessary. It's not a one and done thing. It needs to be done, you know, several, at least quarterly. Um, but Amanda, you're, you're a hygienist. Take us through the biofilm in our, in our mouth. So I, I like to compare shocking and maintenance to, uh, you know, taking care of your teeth every day, right? We want our patients to brush. We want our patients to floss. We want them to use water picks, whatever they need, right? Whatever their personal needs are. So that helps keep, that's their like daily maintenance treatment that keeps the biofilm down, you know, keeps the biofilm low, but the shocking is sort of like their hygiene maintenance appointment. When they come in the chair and they see me and I get out my guided biofilm therapy, or I get out my ultrasonic scaler. And that's really like the shocking. That's really helping to remove that biofilm that has built up over three to six months, you know, hanging out in that nice warm sulcus. And so we need both because you'd never tell your patients, oh, just come in every three months. I got it. And you'd also never tell your patients, oh, just brush and floss. It's all fine. So you have to have both together to be able to keep that biofilm at bay. Exactly. Oh. And step three, testing. Amanda, why don't you uh, start us off with testing? Testing is my favorite part of this all because that's the thing that, you know, it lets you know if it's working. You know, that's, that's the thing that, and to me, it's like, it's the task that I can complete, which is so exciting. Like I can test and be like, I passed the test today. <laughs> so sometimes treating patients, you don't feel like you ever like totally pass the test. And so I get to pass the test. So you have to make sure that you are testing whatever maintenance product you have decided, you and your office have decided to use to make sure it's working. Write it down so that you have the documentation so that you're under that 500 CFUs. And I always like to say, let your patients know that you're doing it, especially as this press is gonna come out about Anaheim and Atlanta, um, put it on your social media, be like, yep, we passed the test again. Um, and that's a whole nother marketing way to show patients that you are taking care of them and you're taking care of your staff because remember we're inhaling all of those aerosols too. Don't Absolutely. forget that. Mike, how often should we test? Oh, i let, let someone else answer that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I, I would say this. The, the studies show that people who test quarterly don't fail. They fail like 80% less often than people who test rest less frequently. That's why in Washington, the state says you got to test every line every quarter, every 90 days, test every line every 90 days. Uh, that's why Pelton and Crane, Midmark, Dental Ease, all the equipment companies say test your water every 90 days. It's in their instructions for use. If you, and, and plus it's a feasible, it's a, it's a good interval right? 90 days. If you do it four times a year, you proved your water was safe every day. Then it, and it's pretty cheap. It's like 12 cents a patient to test every line every 90 days. Oh, here's the data. Yes. Thank you. Um, right. Guys who test quarterly, look at these uh, community health clinics, CHCs, 94.7% pass rate. Crazy good. And, and this is the same Molinari study. The more you test, the better you get. Except for the fourth test, for some oh. reason, people thought that was. Yeah, <laughs> the first test you might not pass, but it's all right. It's normal, and we'll get you better results. Because that's what happens. You test three times. You oh, I got it, and then they forget to shock or something. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's move into what type of testing methods that um, you guys have to choose from. There's a couple different types. So um, there's a mail-in lab test where um, you would be able to send your water samples into a third-party lab and get that third-party verification. Um, so the R2A method is a mail-in test, and that is the gold standard for dental unit water testing. It gives you a precise CFU count, so you'll get an exact number um, of the microbial count. Um, it ships to a lab overnight, so gets to the lab super quick and the results are emailed to you depending on what, what type of test you do. It's um, you get the results in one to seven days. And then we have, um, or there's also available in-office testing. And so the great thing about in-office testing is, is that it's 100% confidential and 
you know, it's confidential when you send it to a lab too, but if you're doing it in the office, your eyes are the only ones seeing the test. Um, it's more economical. Um, you don't have to mail anything, so you're not paying for shipping. Um, OSAP recommends that if you do test with the in-office test to test at a higher frequency. And again, depending on which um, in-office test you use, you'll receive the results within two to seven days. Um, and I know this is it's so hard because it's just another thing you have to do, another thing you have to pay for. But Amanda, we have the, the on option for them to save, right? We totally do. So the first time I did this, we hadn't even talked about pooled testing. I didn't even know we could do it. But now you can save money. And so you can actually use one of these in-office tests and you can you test all of your water lines in one op, just one op's worth. So you can test your air water syringe, you can test your handpiece, you can test your air polisher and you can test your cavitron and you just put in a little bit, a little bit like four equal amounts and then you go through the testing process and then you get another test out and you do it for the next op. So maybe if you have four ops in your office, you only need four of these as opposed to needing 16 of them like I did the first time I did this. So it's a great way to save some money uh, and make it happen a little faster. And it really works actually, which is great. So the data shows that uh, when you, we did it singularly, uh, versus when we did pool, the results were just about the same. Very good. That's exactly. True. We're getting okay, some super everybody. cool questions. Oh, go ahead. It's official. You guys can all be waterline nerds, just like us. So <laughs> this is how you're going to get your CE credit. So if you want to take your phone out, take a picture of it real quick, you can definitely do that. We'll go back to this though. Um, but to get your CE credit, you want to go to cezoom.com, log into your account, click the green verify button on the course, type in the code ProEdge2021 and you have five days to do that. So I recommend jumping on there and just getting your CE credit. 